And that's what they did today. They put Manchester United under serious pressure. You could see that last week, I commended Liverpool as the, the United who took their own chances and it became an end-to-end -end game. You know, both teams had chances to win this one, but uh, it ended a 1-1 draw. That's the and difference right there from Chelsea, from Crystal Palace, from Tottenham, from uh, uh, to United. The teams that are doing well currently, Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool, these teams work hard off the ball. Transit TV, welcome back again. Welcome back to we just finished watching the last game of the, our Big Sunday as we called it last weekend when we were previewing the games for this weekend. Yeah, the three games today, they looked uh, very tasty in the eye if you look at them on paper before the games came on this Sunday. And uh, that was going to be Chelsea playing at uh, Stamford Bridge against Crystal Palace and Tottenham, of course, traveling to Newcastle and followed by the big one, the biggest rivalry in English football, Manchester United hosting their old driver Liverpool at Old Trafford and these games have come and gone I give my of course what I call beyond the scoreline series before the panel will be on the studio tomorrow to give a, de a more detailed uh, outlook or review of this game starting with the Chelsea and uh, before we continue please don't forget to hit the like button subscribe if you have not done so and please share this video and help us uh, in this uh, project so we're going to start with the Chelsea Crystal Palace game weekend the last weekend Chelsea we are on fire they beat Wolves 6 2 and more large part of that game of those goals came in the second half. You remember the first half ended 2 2 and the second half Chelsea completely wiped out Wolves and ended that game 3 6 2. Uh Manny Magic getting his hat trick and uh Kopama as well getting the hat trick of assist in that game. And I know that many Chelsea fans would have expected that Chelsea will continue in that in that same form this weekend. But that would for me that would have been a mistake because we all know that this team is a project is in fact the project just kicked off with Maraska who has shown that he what he wants what he demands what he requires he requires from his players to give him week in week out the basic being uh, working hard for the team and uh, of course the other things philosophy quality will be will be added on it Chelsea this Chelsea has managed to assemble solid uh, quality going forward there are about eight or six players in both wings and in the attack maybe not in the, in the middle of the attack in that front that can hurt anything hurt any defense so it's not Chelsea fans or anybody that supports Chelsea will not be wrong to expect them to score goals but uh, one thing you have to bear in mind and that showed today that this team lacks a uh, a lot of experience they are good players but there's no so much quality so much uh, experience in that combination uh, Joa Felix we know has quality he's been around for a little bit but he hasn't really played a lot of games in the past few years he's been we know his issues in uh, Atletico Madrid he was even in Chelsea sometime in the last one year and went back on loan Jackson is an upcoming just one season in uh, La Liga before Chelsea got him uh, Copama joined the last season had a bilan season last season after breaking out from the City uh, Academy me. So you, you see the Modric has not played the top flight football in Europe for a long time. So these are young players coming out. They, got, they have, the, they have this, the, the ingredients to, to the, the coach needs to work with but they're not there yet. So they're going to have these inconsistencies and that's what we saw today. Uh, the middle corporate being the 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 hero of last weekend, not in Madeke, in the beginning of this game because Chelsea started this game out of the blocks quick, put uh, Crystal Palace under pressure, created a lot of chances, but uh, Nani Madeke, being a young player, expected himself to do the, exactly the same thing that he did last week, and we are, was selfish in some instances, tried to take chances by himself, missed a lot of them, though he created the one good that Chelsea scored, but uh, that meant that all the chances that came begging we are, all the chances that they created came begging and they couldn't convert them, and uh, Crystal Palace grew back into the game, got their equalizer, and had an upper hand. If you 
you are a Crystal Palace fan, you might be thinking that this was two points dropped. Because, you know, considering how the game ended, because Crystal Palace grew into, it, into the game, created their own chances, and it became an end-to-end -end game. You know, both teams had chances to win this one, but uh, it ended a 1-1 draw. And uh, one of the key things... Like I said, you find out in this Chelsea team is inconsistency. And that is understandable because this is a new project and these are young players. And that there are very important positions in that team that still needs to be filled. The span of that team, they still don't have an established goal scorer. Jackson got his goal today, but we know that if you if Chelsea had a better quality in that position, they would have won this game today. Even at the on the 84th minute, there was a chance, glorious chance for him to win it all for Chelsea. And as usual, he scored both the chances. And uh, you know, so that that's the key thing for Chelsea. And secondly, discipline. Discipline in the sense of of these players staying loyal to what the coach wants from them and discipline of the ball. Chelsea's players, the front players and the midfield sometimes look like they are not interested in what is going on. They allow teams play through them. They allow teams play against them for sustained periods. And we saw that today. That midfield completely was just wide open. Crystal Palace was playing through that midfield, creating chances, running at their defense time and time and again. So these are the two things I feel that Chelsea fans or Chelsea or Moraska should be worried about. How do I get this team to understand the importance of the discipline of work? It's not just Palmer getting on the ball, making, creating stuff. It's not about not the AK, running on defenders, but there is still, and I'm going to visit them and talk about Liverpool, and there is still, you're still required to do the defensive, do the, the dirty work. It looks like these players don't still understand it or are not ready to do that part of the job. And if you can do that, then there's are, are still a long way for this team to go. We move to Newcastle hosting Tottenham. And the Poscoglu, we know him, he has said it and he has insisted that he will play the same way regardless of where the team plays. And we knew that. So he came to Newcastle today, did exactly that created a chance to put Newcastle under enormous pressure against the run of play. Newcastle got their goal through have a balance who just came back from injury. Very, very intelligently taking goal against the run of play. And that after that, of course, you know what happens. Newcastle grew in confidence. But somehow, Tottenham continued again, regained their confidence again and win again kept pounding uh, pressure and got their equalizer, which was an own goal from, uh, uh, I think, Dunbarn. Dunbarn, yeah, turned that ball into after a very, very superlative uh, save from the goalkeeper. But again, again, Newcastle with a very, what I would call, a very high quality individual play by Jolentin, turning on the on the Tottenham midfield in the midfield and releasing uh, Murphy against uh, to run on the on the Tottenham defense. And Murphy, of course, had a very selfless assist for Isaac and who stood in at a very very close range, meant that Newcastle won this one. The talking point on this one is, I'm going to put it on. Uh, on Andy Postecoglou. I've watched this EPL for a very long time. I've watched football for a long time to know that at this level, you have to respect your opponents, especially when you're going against the big teams. Newcastle is not a small team in, England, in EPL. And the last two seasons, they've, they've pushed for the top four. They've made the top four. And traditionally, it's a, big, it's a, it's a traditional ground in EPL. You don't go there and, and open yourself up. I believe that is what many don't uh, want to lose this game today. But Sokoglu needs to understand that nobody is against you playing, having a philosophy. But sometimes you have to adapt it to the opponent you're going to face, to the ground that you're going, to the quality that you have in your team. This is one of the, one of the reasons why the main reason that 
Tottenham brought and the Post Club, they're, gonna, they're not going to achieve it, which is to win a trophy. You cannot win a trophy with this mindset. Yes, it's good to put a player under pressure, but week in, week out, it cannot play like that. In EPL, it's very easy for teams to f figure you out. Once teams figure you out, they will continue to punish you with that. There's, there has to be a blend. There has to be some tweak to this week in, week out. You can't be doing exactly the same thing home and away and get results. So I believe that Post Club Blue cost me Tottenham a result, not even a draw from this game today. Whereas on the other side, Newcastle, uh, their industry got them this result today. I know I've accused uh, Eddie Howe of not having a philosophy for a long time. And uh, I think he has gone back to what has helped Newcastle in recent years under him, which is their physicality and their ability to work, to suffer, and uh, try to get results. And that they did today. Then to the big one, Liverpool, traveling to Old Trafford. Based on how United has started this season, one would have thought that this would be a different outcome from what we have been seeing like between these two teams the last four or five seasons. The United had looked different. And if you're listening to and I saw this after the game, he says something that, yeah, this United looked different from what he saw last weekend. And he, when he was pressed, he said that they work harder. And I've said that too, that this new, this new Manchester United team, one thing you can not you know hold against them is that they work a little bit harder. They are, the more, they are, they are ready now to suffer more, they run more. And uh, Slaw said that today uh, as well, that that one thing that he, the difference between the United of this season and that of last season, and a little bit of their shape. But, again, I'm going to put this loss to Eric Ten Hag. This is Manchester, this is Liverpool that has a very strong midfield, especially attacking midfield, power play. You have Salah on the wings. So you cannot, you have to know how to play against them. But putting Casemiro and Kobimeno in that midfield to play against the Liverpool powerhouse of Sobersly, McAllister and Gravenberg was a suicide mission. And that is one of the reasons why United lost this game today. Talking about the game, United started very strongly, put Liverpool on, under pressure, created chances, sure, but missed a lot of them. There's no doubt about that. But as of, of course, this is normal. This is a given. This is Old Trafford. You have to respect. You have to play for the badge. You have to give the fans something to cheer about. And this is what United did. But once the game settled, you could see the difference. The structure of Manchester United was 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 not good. Was not going to get them result against Liverpool. You cannot have a couple of and Casemiro in that midfield. They would run them. And you try to play from from back, which uh, Slot also said that he had to find that the United are doing more this season. He, he, you know Liverpool is a high press team. They did that perfectly on that club and this is one of the things that uh, club, uh, and Slot did not change much in Liverpool. Liverpool still have those, those high press. It's just that they're a little bit more conservative in possession. They are not they're not explosive in possession. But high press, they, they try to press you as high as they can, win the balls there and try to hurt you. And that's what they did today. They put Manchester United under serious pressure. You could see that last week I commended Liverpool as the, the United for sometimes beating the press and trying to go long against their opponents. Then today you refer back to trying to do what you have not perfected against a big team, against a team that does that doesn't that like, really sees the chance to hurt you in the team of Liverpool. So United today for me, I put this loss on everything high. I have insisted that going back after a month or two, the season ended and announcing Ten Hag as the new as the, you couldn't continue with him in the project was a very huge mistake for United. United fans, let me know what you think. Do you agree with me on this one? I feel that United should let Ten Hag go right now. If they, these new owners are serious about the project, about the turning this team to where it belongs, I think Ten Hag should let go. And a new proper coach that has identity, that knows exactly what he's trying to do, to come in, and because this is what United has done in the last decade. They bring in a coach, spend a lot of money, fire him, and start all over again. 
in the summer as a rival fan i was betting what i wanted to get it right they made some making decisions behind the scene that looked like they were ready to go a different route but by the time my tag was announced till now i don't think i think things have gone the other way a lot of people are saying it's because the players when the players come in things will change no it's not going to change if you Look at where United are today and where Liverpool are, and you put two midfielders to, to, to match Liverpool, then you clearly don't know what you are trying to do. And that reminds me, I said in this video that I'm going to talk about working hard off the ball. Not in Madeke, a very chase in Crystal Palace. I was watching them today, I was so frustrated. How unserious, how unconcerned they were to work for their teams off the ball. When Slot was asked today, don't you think that keeping Salah and Diaz high up the pitch to press Manchester United was going to be, it was a gamble. He said it's, it will only be a gamble if Salah and Diaz stayed up there. But if they are able to spring back when they are played through to help the defense, there is not a gamble. And that's the difference. That's the difference right there from Chelsea, from Crystal Palace, from Tottenham, from uh, uh, to United. The teams that are doing well currently, Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool, these teams work hard off the ball. If you don't manage to instill this discipline in your players to do that, it's your, your, you know, achieving something with your team is, is way, way, way out there. And if you listen to his interview, they had a plan. They had studied United and they had a plan. And that plan is executed perfectly. On the other hand, he watched Manchester United. It looked like a team that came on the pitch and felt that they were going to get a result. It was more of individual brilliance, individual contribution. There was not, there was, there's no philosophy. You can't really find out what they're trying to do. Yes, Rashford had a, has flashes of performance in this game. But where is the cohesion between him and other players? What's the plan? And it, it and her keep making some of these substitutions. She's losing a game three zero. We are bringing in uh, Maguire for the lead. I don't know what that's, what that's supposed to do. How that's supposed to affect the result? You know. So I, I don't. I don't think United should stay with Eriten Hag. I don't think so. And uh, to end this one, Mohamed Salah. I have continued to say it. This guy, Liverpool should do everything that they can to keep this guy because it looks like everything good about who can see or want to start by Liverpool to their bad slot. Salah has remained a key factor in what Liverpool are going to do going forward. You remember Salah has, this is his last season in his contract, the same with Van Dijk and uh, also Trent Arnold. I don't know what the plans are. I don't know. I know Liverpool want to keep these players. I hope they stay. If not, it's going to be a long thing for Liverpool. Mohamed Salah again today shown why he is the best winger. If you ask me in the world today, maybe between him and Vincent Junior. But if you look at the numbers, <laughs> Salah is out of his insane. What this guy does, assists, goals, and the work he does for the team of the ball as well so let me know what you think about this and why we look forward to a more detailed uh, review of these games come tomorrow the fans of these clubs will be on the studio and they join the panel to look at these games and i'll see you next time please don't forget to subscribe if you're not done so hit the like button and share and i'll see you next time ciao